James Baldwin is widely considered one of the most influential writers and social critics of the 20th century. There's been a recent revival of interest in his work, in part because of the Oscar-nominated film, I Am Not Your Negro. This year marks 30 years since Baldwin's death, but in the last 12 months, his book sales have increased by a remarkable 110%. Now the public can view a rare collection of Baldwin's work at the Schomburg Center for Research in Black Culture in New York City's Harlem neighborhood. The center's director gave us a look. This is James Baldwin's account of his learning of Martin Luther King Jr.'s death. When we announced that we acquired the Baldwin papers at an event, people were just blown away. And people have been just coming through the doors really fascinated and interested in Baldwin. Old and young, black and white, all races and colors and orientation, all different folks come out to see what Baldwin has to say and to connect with him in a powerful way. And I think he's connected with them because he writes about their truth. It is now with very great pleasure and a very great sense of honor that I called Mr. James Baldwin to speak third to this motion. One of my favorite speeches of Baldwin's is when he was debating William F. Buckley at Cambridge. And he got up there and he spoke about race. And in the moment you are born, since you don't know any better, every stick and stone and every face is white. And since you have not yet seen a mirror, you suppose that you are too. And he spoke about the United States and just opened his mouth and change the world. It comes as a great shock to discover that Gary Cooper killing off the Indians when you were rooting for Gary Cooper, that the Indians were you. Baldwin did an essay, which eventually became part of The Fire Next Time, the book, in The New Yorker in 1962. And I read it, and I was very moved by it. And I asked Life magazine, where I had just started doing freelance work, if I could do a photo essay on Baldwin. They agreed, and he agreed, and then for the next month, in January 1963, we traveled throughout the South. I was also struck seeing Steve Shapiro's photographs, the way that he captured Baldwin in some of the intimate moments we have come to know, like him dancing in a living room, or him sort of alone, or him with a homeless child. Very powerful images that I think strike us today as how we know Baldwin um, besides his writing. Even beyond the images that we saw, the people that we met, the leaders, and just the whole spirit of the South at that particular time, I think it's his personality that comes through. I think it's the way he spoke to people and how he really got to their hearts. It is a matter of changing the attitudes of this country. Martin Luther King is a great and heroic man, but he cannot do for you what only you can do. I think it, more people are coming to know him, and I think more people have co are coming to know him because history repeats itself, and we're living in a time that, in a lot of ways, Baldwin was living through. <laughs> see Black Lives Matter, uh, you see a sign from Steve Shapiro's images from the Civil Rights Movement that says stop police killings, it could be yesterday. And that really connection of Baldwin's civil rights activity, his writing about race, is really relevant because we're thinking and, and trying to contend with race still very much in the same ways that Baldwin was. A collector's edition of James Baldwin, The Fire Next Time, featuring photos by Steve Shapiro, is on sale right now. I never, ever got a chance to meet him, but Maya Angelou knew him well and used to always tell great stories about him. I'd love to see a debate with Bill Buckley yeah. at Cambridge. Yes, yeah. that would be good. Glad we did. Peace. Mm -hmm. And you can hear more of CBS This Morning on our podcast. Find extended interviews and podcast originals on iTunes and Apple's podcast app. You're watching CBS This Morning.